to hear your questions and your thoughts. Um, you can feel free to send them in the chat or um, I, I hope that we can have some time at the end to discuss your thoughts together. Um, so I, this is my first year working as a speech and language pathologist. So I just um, graduated in May and um, I'm fresh in the field and um, full of new ideas and also open to learning a lot of new things too. Um, so this is the most recent um, strategies that I've learned about how to support your child um, building speech and language skills at home. So today we will cover um, some basic speech and language development, what to look for in your child. Then we'll go over some tips on how you can help speech and language growth. And then at the end, um, I'll talk about if you have concerns about your child's speech or language development, some places you can look at um, for resources or some next steps that you can take. So we'll start with um, basic speech and language development. Um, and I'd like to start with a little snippet about learning more than one language, because um, I'm sure many of you come from um, having multiple languages in your background, and maybe your kids also speak more than one language. Um, speaking more than one language is a really awesome thing. Um, there, in the past, there's sometimes been um, miscommunication about what learning more than one language um, can do to a child, what a child can handle. Um, but the research is very clear that children do really well when they learn more than one language. They can do it. It's not too confusing for them. Um, and especially if a child is raised with one language, um, you know, maybe if you moved from a different country and a child started learning a different language from birth and then they go to another country and they have to learn a new language, um, their first language will help them succeed in learning the second language. So I really like to emphasize that um, it is really important that if you want your child to learn more than one language, um, you can totally do that and they won't get confused or they won't mix the languages up um, more than they should later in life. So when both languages are introduced at once, let's say a child is introduced or born into a bilingual family, both of the languages grow equally. Um, you'll see similar language development to what I'm um, gonna talk about in a few slides. And it's normal for a child to sort of mix up the languages sometimes when they're really young, when they're learning it. Maybe they'll say, a sentence and they'll start in one language and then end in another. And that's normal while they're sorting it out up until a certain age and that won't hurt their development in one language or another. If a child is in a situation where they learn one language at birth when they're young and then they're introduced to another one later in life, maybe they um, learn Arabic at home and then they start to go to school where English is the primary language um, it's pretty typical to see a time where they're silent or really quiet in both languages. And this could last about six months. Um, and this can seem kind of scary when it happens, but this is very normal actually. Um, the child is just taking everything in. Um, sometimes they want to sort of sort things out in their head before they jump to trying to speaking the new language. Um, so the silent period is normal when they are introduced to a new language later in life. And it's just important to be patient um, when learning any new language. It can take three to five years to develop basic communication skills in a new language. And it can take five to seven years to develop the higher level academic language skills. Um, and this is for typical development. So um, it's just important to be careful, uh, to be patient, um, to understand that learning takes time. And um, I'll talk about some tips later on and how you can support your child if they're in a situation where they're learning another language later in life. So um, just for some basic um, language development, 
Do you have a question? I'm listening. Oh, sorry. Oh. sorry, were you asking a question? Okay. Um, so we would expect a child to have their first words around one year old. Um, sometimes it's later than one year. Sometimes it's earlier. Everyone is different. And before this one year mark, um, your child might start to say fake words um, like wawa for water or um, a word that's not quite the adult word, but it's getting closer. Um, and this is a good sign that they're about to start saying some of those real words. And when a baby is one year old, they should understand about 50 words. Then when we get to about one and a half years old or 18 months, we see children beginning to put words together like doggy go. Um, and with this, we also see a huge burst in their vocabulary development. Um, when they're a year and a half, they should have about 50 words in their vocabulary that they can say. Um, and we see a huge growth from this year and a half to two year mark in their expressive vocabulary. So we hope to see that they'd be just talking and talking and talking and learning more words very quickly in um, either or both languages that they're learning. And when they get to about three years old, we see that they're putting two, three, or four words together into sentences, maybe more. We see that they're starting to add grammar to words. So um, if they're speaking English, they might start adding the ing um, grammar marker to words to say, you know, I am running. Um, they're using three or four word sentences and they can ask simple questions like, what that? So by preschool, if a child is still um, talking in gibberish or nonsense, you can't really understand a lot of what they're saying. That is something that would be of concern that you would want to get checked out. If they're only speaking in single words, um, like saying ball, cat, dog, they're not putting two words together, that would be something um, you might want to um, follow up on with a professional. If they're not doing a lot of nonverbal communication, like gesturing, pointing, focusing on a game or a toy with you, um, interacting with others, that's another um, thing that we might wanna look at. And if they have less than 50 words um, that they say out loud. So by the time a child is three years old, we would expect that they can tell a basic story. Um, now the story might not be very good. It might just be a string of events. Like I go to grandma's house, we eat cookies. I like grandma. You'll probably still be hearing a lot of errors and grammar, but they're still able to put those events in order and their sentences are starting to get longer even with some of those mistakes. We're seeing more grammar come out like ED, like the ING we talked about earlier. But again, some of those mistakes are still normal. They should be able to ask and understand basic WH questions like who, what, and where. Um, and at three years old, I should know if, if your child is learning two languages or more, it's still pretty normal to mix up some of the rules of languages. For example, um, I'm not super familiar with Arabic, but I have learned that sometimes um, the nouns, phrases that we would say in English are, they go in a different order in Arabic. So if your child is trying to say, I go to the gas station, they might say, I go to the station gas. So they're applying an Arabic language rule to English grammar. Um, and this will resolve itself when they get a little bit older, but at three years old, mixing up some of the rules is pretty typical. Um, 
and they should know where, like who they can speak each language to. So by four years old, we're seeing sentences become longer. We're seeing some um, special words in the sentence that can connect ideas like and. So one example of something a four-year-old might say is, my brother plays blocks and tickles me. Maybe he will surprise me. So in that sentence, the boy's using the word and. He's um, making a simple prediction about his brother. Um, a four-year-old should be starting to identify rhymes so they can identify that cat and bat are rhyming words. They should still be able to ask and answer those simple WH questions like who, what, where, and when. Um, and at this point, they should be able to ask and understand some more complicated WH questions like how or why, things that require um, a longer answer. So they might say, how you do that? The grammar is still not all there, but they're able to ask a harder question using the word how. Um, and at this point, it's still sometimes normal to start a sentence in one language and end in another language at four years old. By five years old, now we see um, their stories are starting to be a little juicier. They, instead of just being a sequence of, event, of events, these stories are starting to have the important parts that make stories interesting, like the characters, there's a problem. They could talk about the feelings of characters in the story, um, what happens in the ending. So a five-year-old story might sound like, we went to the store to buy juice, but they were all out. So mommy bought milk and we went home. So I'm seeing the word but um, to connect two sentences, um, to, to connect two ideas in this five-year-old sentence. That's an important development. She's making her story a little more interesting, a little more dramatic. Um, she's saying we have to stay home because of COVID. So she's using the word because to connect two ideas. And by five years old, most kids who are learning two languages will have the rules of each language separated out. So at four and younger, um, it's pretty normal. If they're sometimes mixing up the rules, maybe they're taking a rule in English and applying it to Arabic or vice versa. Um, by five years old, they should pretty much have them sorted out as long as they've been learning both languages since birth. Um, and by five years old, uh, your child should be able to follow one and two step directions and they can break words into sounds and syllables like water, melon, or they can understand that the word cup has three sounds, cup. So by five years old, um, some things that might be cause for concern are if a child can't answer basic or some of those more complicated WH questions. So if you ask, where is she? And they reply, girl running. She's not really understanding that where is asking for a place. She sort of answered that like a what question, what is she doing? But we're asking where, we're looking for a place. So that might be a um, red flag. Um, if a story is out of order consistently, or they're just not including some of the important parts of a story like the characters or a problem, um, that might be cause for concern. Um, if you're noticing a child is having a hard time identifying rhymes, so maybe saying that cat and shoe rhyme, or if they are having a hard time with following one or two step directions. And not just not following the directions because they don't want to, but truly not understanding what to do when they hear um, a one step or two step direction. Does anyone have any questions so far about some of the language development stuff? Okay. So 
This next part, um, I think is more interesting because this is, these are tips that you can, things that you can do to help your child develop stronger speech and language skills. So I'll start with my best piece of advice. It's very simple, um, talking. <laughs> it's almost too simple. So um, if you wanna get better at something, you have to do the thing, right? If you wanna get better at jump roping, you have to jump rope more. If you wanna get better at running, you have to run more. So to help your child get better at talking, the best thing you can do is talk to them. Um, talking while they're around you, even just saying, what you're doing as you're cooking, like, oh, I'm putting the rice in the pan, now I'm mixing, now I'm gonna go to the fridge, saying out loud what you're doing, um, asking them questions, having them tell you stories, telling them stories. Anything that you can do that involves talking is going to help your child develop their speech and language skills in whatever language um, you're talking to them in it's fine. It doesn't matter the language as long as they're getting good language input. Our brains are a lot like computers. Um, if you think about artificial intelligence, like a computer that has to learn something, that's sort of how our brains work. Um, we need lots and lots of examples to learn something. So the more you talk, the more examples of different types of speech and language you're giving to your child and the stronger they'll be able to develop those skills. My second best piece of advice is reading a lot with your child and I will get to that later on. So the next few slides are ways that you can really beef up some of the talking that you're doing with your child, some of the talking that they're doing with you. Um, to get the most bang for your buck. So if you play with your child, um, something that really helps them become interested and invested in an activity that will help them develop speech and language skills is if you just follow their lead. So let them go to whatever toy or whatever activity they wanna do you can follow their lead. Um, you don't even have to say anything. You can just sit down next to them. If they're playing with blocks, just start playing with blocks. If they're stacking the blocks, you make a tower right next to them. You don't even have to talk at first. Once you're doing the same thing that your child is doing, just start to talk about what they're doing. Like, oh, you're building a tower. Your tower is so tall. So you're just kind of narrating what they're doing. It's gonna feel a lot like you're talking to yourself. Um, it really will. You might feel a little crazy at times, but it is helping them get that running input. It's attaching language to the actions that they're doing. So first start talking about what they're doing. Then you can add in what you're doing. So in this picture, the dad is saying, you're building the tower. Your tower is tall. Then he starts to talk about what he's doing. I have green blocks. Then maybe the kid will join in and say, block. So he'll, he'll pick up little parts of that language. And most importantly, he'll have labels to attach to the activity that he enjoys. And just continuing to follow the child's lead will help them be more interested in what you're doing. Um, so I have a video I'd like to show um, can you all see the video tab right now? Okay, thank you. So this is an example of a parent who is just following their child's lead. And the parent is just going to talk about what the child is doing. She's going to talk about what she's doing. And really, whether the child is talking at this point or not, it's okay, they're still getting good language input.
So the mom may appear like she's just talking to herself, but um, again, it's just attaching that language to the activities that your child likes and um, in a way that's not interrupting them while they play. So they're still able to have fun. It doesn't feel like they're working. So another thing you can do while you're playing with your child um, or while they are talking is adding one or two extra words to whatever they say. So you're just taking what they say and you're literally adding on one or two more words. So you could wait for your child to say anything and you repeat what they say with one or two extra words. And you're not even asking them to repeat what you say. You're just giving them an example of how they could make their sentence better without interrupting their play. So if a child says, throw a ball, you could say, throw the purple ball. So you're adding in another little chunk, another little bit to make the language richer. If the child just says ball, then you could say, throw a ball. It doesn't have to be anything complicated. So here's another um, video to show an example of that. Um, this boy in the blue, he's going to say something and the woman is just going to add one word onto what he says. And you'll notice he picks it up pretty quickly and then he's saying the two words together. So that was really simple. He just started with red and she added on grapes. So she said red grapes and then he picked it up right away, red grapes. Now it's not always that beautiful. Your child might not always pick that up right away. That's okay. Again, their brains are like computers that are just taking everything in and the more examples that they get, the more repetitions that they get will help them to be able to produce that skill after some time. So a, a similar strategy that you could use instead of adding on extra words, if you're noticing that your child is having a lot of mistakes in what they're saying, you could just say exactly what they said, but the correct way. And you don't need to focus on adding on more words. Um, you're basically just giving them a model of what they wanted to say, but how to say it the right way. Um, and it's in a really friendly way where you're not calling them out and saying, that's not the right way to say it. This is how we say this. You're simply just repeating it after them. It almost sounds like you're just copying them the whole time they're playing, but it's about giving them that feedback that maybe they're not asking for, but their brain needs to help, to help, <clears throat> to help them develop those language skills. So if the girl is saying, she throwed the ball, <clears throat> the mom could simply keep playing and say, she threw the ball. So you're still interacting with the kid. You're still um, letting them play. You're not making them feel like they made a big mistake, but their, their brain is sort of catching that and remembering that model of the correct way to say something. So here's an example of that with a mother playing with her son. one of my favorite strategies to use if your child is having a lot of mistakes in their language um, or in their speech. It works with, with speech sounds too if they're saying not saying a certain sound right. Um, it's just a really gentle correction that 
that you might not even notice is a correction. So we, we're not making them very self-conscious of their mistakes. We're not making them feel like they're working or like this is not enjoyable because mom or dad keeps correcting me. Um, it's simply a way to help them with that little record that they're keeping of, in their head of how things are supposed to be said. This is another strategy, the stop and wait. Um, this can be kind of hard for a caregiver because you are so used to giving your child everything that they need and you want to give them the world and you know you wanna give them things before they even ask it. Um, but just pausing and waiting for your child to ask for something is really huge and helping them understand that my words can get me things. So my words have meanings. These are like really powerful things that I can do when I talk and um, helping them you, um, develop those speech and language skills. So you can pause in the middle of a routine, so maybe a song, maybe during bath time, maybe during a snack. Um, let's say you're about to give your child something, you just stop and just kind of look at them expectedly. And it might feel really uncomfortable. You might be waiting for a, a while, like count to 10 in your head and just, just pause, count to 10. Don't give your child um, whatever you were about to hand them and wait and see if they request it. Um, and even if they're not using, you know, proper speech sounds, or if they made mistakes in their words, that's fine. All we want is for them to learn that when I try to say something, I get the thing that I want. So in this picture, the girl's reaching for the ice cream. Um, maybe the mom could be holding it and just waiting for the child to say, wow, ice. And really we're wanting the child to say, I want ice cream, but she's just not at that point yet. For now, just requesting wa ice is great. So she's gonna get the ice cream for that. And um, again, it might feel like you're waiting an uncomfortable, awkward amount of time, but this is really great to just give your child time to think about what they're supposed to say, figure it out, and they're getting the practice of um, saying those words. So here's an example of that skill. Um, so at the beginning of the video, the boy wanted um, some crackers and the mom purposely only gave him two crackers. So she knew that after he ate those two crackers, he was gonna want more. So this is the part um, where he's she's gonna make him request it. The cracker box is out of reach. He can't reach it from his chair. And mom's not just gonna give it to him. She's gonna make him work for it. So we'll see um, how he requests the crackers. I know it can be hard sometimes if you know your child is going to want something, you know, sometimes it's just easier to, to do what you know needs to be done. But um, stopping and having them request this will help their speech and language development. Okay, so for younger kids and for some of the older kids, asking open ended questions is an excellent way to develop speech and language skills. Sometimes, um, again, as caregivers, we're so used to simplifying things for the child. We can ask a lot of yes or no questions, like, do you want this? Do you want this? Did you have a good day? 
things that can be answered with yes or no, but that doesn't help them get that language practice as much as asking, tell me about your day. Or instead of asking, oh, did you draw a picture of a dog? You could ask, what's happening in your picture? Tell me about what you're drawing. It will get you a longer response and this will help your child get that practice of talking. So instead of asking, you know, do you want the blue crayon? You could ask, what crayon do you want? You could ask, what are you drawing? You could ask, um, what do you think about this? Hey, what's your favorite holiday? Just trying to ask more of those open-ended questions is going to help them develop their creativity, their critical thinking, and their speech and language skills. And here's an example of that. So if you can just change um, the habit that a lot of us are in of asking, did you this, do you this, you know, did you make a train, do you want this, all of those, those phrases that result in a yes or no answer, we can switch more to tell me about this, tell me what you want, tell me so and so. And it will help your child have more of a chance to use those speech and language skills that they are developing. And like I mentioned earlier, um, my first biggest piece of advice is to just talk, talk about anything, anytime, anywhere, in whatever language you're most comfortable with. Um, my second biggest piece of advice is reading. Reading will not only help their actual reading skills and their ability to succeed in school, but reading helps communication so much. Um, lots and lots of research shows that early language skills predict later reading skills and reading helps grow language skills. So language and reading kind of work in this cycle where if you're really good at language, you're gonna like to read. And if you like to read, then you're gonna read more and you're gonna get better at reading and therefore you'll get better at language. Well, the same thing can reverse or can work in the reverse way. If your language is not great, you might not be a great reader. You might not enjoy reading. You probably won't read as much for fun and you won't get better at reading because you're not reading as much. So encouraging your child to read will really help with their um, speech language and in their ability to succeed in school. So when you're reading a book together, um, you can definitely read the words, um, but you can do much more than reading the words in a book. You can talk about the pictures, you can bring in open-ended questions like we talked about. You can talk about how the character feels, how do you think this character feels? Well, how do you think this character feels about the same thing? You can make predictions. What do you think will happen next? Anytime I read a book with a child, I show them the book, I show them the front cover, and I say, what do you think this book is gonna be about? And a lot of the times when I first ask them that question, when we're first working together, they go, well, I don't know, we haven't read the book yet. And I kind of just wait 
I do that wait strategy like we talked about earlier. I wait for them and I say, look at the pictures, you know, what do you think it might be about? And um, we have lots of long discussions even before we read the book. So, you know, even if you're not reading the actual words, you don't have to read every single word in the book. Just making an interactive book reading experience um, will help them with their um, enjoyment of reading and with their speech and language skills. So here's an example of um, a teacher reading to some kids and she's doing a great job of asking questions, making predictions, um, really doing much more than just reading the words in the book. So they talked about the pictures, they made a prediction, they, um, and the kids were so ex much more excited to be part of the book, be actively engaged in the book than, um, than just reading the words and listening. Okay, so the last part is pretty short. Um, if you, have concerns about your child's speech or language skills. Maybe you're not sure if they're developing at the right pace, um, or maybe you notice some of those red flags that we talked about earlier. Here are some resources or things you can do um, as next steps. So the Hannon Center is a website that um, gives a lot of parent tools and resources for helping very young kids develop speech and language. A lot of the strategies I talked about today are from the Hannon Center. Um, it's very well researched. Um, so that website has a lot of helpful parent tips and handouts um, for some of your younger kids, maybe from birth to about kindergarten age. The American Speech, Language, and Hearing Association website is another good resource. They have, um, they have handouts with typical speech and language development milestones um, if you want to keep up with your child's speech and language development. Um, when I was looking for videos for this presentation, I stumbled upon a playlist on YouTube. Um, it's a series called Helping Your Child Learn to Communicate. Um, and they have a video for each of the strategies that I talked about today. And they do a really nice job um, describing what the strategy is, how you do it, and showing an example. Um, so if you look through some of these resources and decide, mm, I'm still not sure, I'm still concerned about my child. Um, you can share your concerns with your child's school. If you raise concerns, your child's school should um, work with you to um, check and see if your child maybe is in need of an evaluation um, or would benefit from one. Or if for some reason um, that's not an option, um, you can reach out to a local therapy clinic. Um, there are lots around the Orland area um, to see if your child would qualify for an evaluation um, to take next steps moving forward. Um, I just wanna give a special thank you to the faculty and my classmates from the University of Iowa Speech Language Pathology Program. Um, some of them helped me with this presentation. And of course, all of the knowledge I have today is from them. Um, and from all of our discussions. Um, so I'd like to open it up for questions and discussion. Um, and I'd love to hear some of your questions that you have. 